Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy, and today I'm gonna to be checking out another filament dryer, this time from a company called iBOS, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, E-I-B-O-S, and inside of this black box is their new Polyphemus filament dryer. So I'm gonna be checking this out today if you're interested in purchasing this. I'll leave a link down in the description. Right now as I record it, it's up for pre-order and you can get it for $129.99. And if you happen to get in on that pre-order, they're gonna throw in an attachment that will allow you to adapt to three kilogram spools inside of this filament dryer. So when I got this box in, I was like, how can this be a filament dryer? This seems like it is uh, too small for that. But turns out I have to put it together. There's a little bit of assembly required. But some of the things that this dryer is capable of, it is digital. It has a digital display. It also has some motorized wheels to keep the filament turning. And then it also has this humidity mode that's going to regulate the heater in the filament box. So if you don't need it to be heated all the time and you just want to control the humidity, the humidity level inside of the box, you can set it for that as well. I'm going to go over and look up some more features but first I need to see what's inside of these two boxes so first we got this instruction manual here I'm gonna tell us everything that we need to know and it's also got some installation instructions already in here along with a parts list parts list in here for a handle um, lid frame a lid frame B top panel side panels front and back um, panels some screws Allen wrench the main base some stopper rollers power cord shouldn't be all that difficult and I think all of that should be here inside of this brown box. Yeah, so here I've got some frame pieces. I'm not gonna pull everything out. I'm just gonna follow the instructions, but here are some of the frame pieces in here. And then inside of the black box, styrofoam on top, we got everything else. We got a bag of goodies in here. So this one definitely looks like the, uh, the motor, as well as some screws. PTFE tube, looks like we got some gasket rings possibly, power cable, here is the base, there you go, black base right there, and then, ooh, here are the panels, so this is not glass, this uh, is probably either acrylic or polycarbonate, but it's not going to shatter if you accidentally uh, drop it. And we got a few of those and in here, the handles and everything else. Yeah, so so I need to go ahead and assemble this. So um, stay tuned, don't go far because through the magic of editing, here it is. And just like that, everything is assembled. And it was really easy to put together, not difficult at all. And all the tools that you need are already provided. So in this case, it was an Allen wrench and some screws. And all the pieces just slide in together and you're really just fastening them down. And also, this came with it as well, the parts to make the expansion slot. So this is what you're gonna use if you happen to have any three kilogram spools on hand. You would simply take this and put this inside of the machine and then you you would have to replace the small screws that you inserted at the bottom of this lid and then you would have to uh, replace those with long screws that also come in here so that these will be nice and secure together so this is what the expansion part looks like so if you pre-order it that's what you're going to get and as far as everything that's left over um, this is spare motor in here and I didn't need to install this. There's nothing in the instructions that I saw about this, but I guess just in case the motor were to go out, there's an additional one. And the PTFE tube, I'm not gonna need in this case right now. And then these are just the long screws with the Allen key for those long screws. And then I have some uh, soft silicone uh, stoppers if I ever need them and then just some silicone rings as well. So you definitely have everything that you need. All right, so let's take a look at this here filament dryer. Now I already got two spools of filament inside of here. This is just um, PLA, but if I just take these out, I'll be able to show you uh, closer what it looks like on the inside of here. Now, one of the things that I think is pretty cool is that it comes with two spots for you to insert some desiccant. And basically it's just this stuff, the little silica gel packages that comes with every spool of filament. You usually just throw those out. At least most people do, I'd imagine. But for this, what you can do, they got these two slots here that you can just push in and take off these little latches and you can just drop some silica gel 
right in there and that'll help to control some of the moisture when you aren't actively heating. So I thought that was very cool that they included that as well. And then the cover has a handle, which I'm very happy to see. And then it also has this little opening here that you can open and close. So when you're actively heating, you leave this open. But if you just want to control humidity, you can turn it so that it's closed. And then for these three little openings here, those soft silicone circle pieces that also come with this, you can plug these holes to help control the humidity. But you know, most of the time, if you're just using this to dry your filament, you're just going to keep this open anyway. It has an off and an on position so that you can know whether or not it's closed. And it tells you on here, do not close the air outlet when drying. All right, so you just put that down. Oh, and while I'm here, I might as well just show you this. If you wanted to use the expansion piece, all you have to do is just put that down right there. It fits into place. And then you would just put the lid right down. And just remember, you will be using the long screws to replace the short screws. So this will all be combined. So that's basically how it would look if you were going to use the expansion slot. All right, so I'm going to take this out. And I'm going to put these filaments back in. And I really want to bring particular attention to this white spool of filament because I'm going to be drying this inside of here because this filament it's got some little bit weird going on with it. I'm gonna to try to get close so that you can see this, but this was brand new filament, fresh out of the packaging, and when I ran it through my nozzle, it comes out pretty thick. In addition to coming out thick, it's also really bumpy, you know? And usually when filament comes out, it's nice and thin, and it makes a nice little circle, but this was coming out pretty thick, and because it has all these blemishes on it, I'm thinking maybe there's too much moisture in this filament and it was like that when I bought it. So I'm gonna see what happens once I put this through its paces, put it inside of this filament dryer. And since this can hold two spools of filament, I'm just gonna grab some of this blue filament that's almost all the way empty. Why not dry that out as well? So put those two in there pop this lid on and now I'm going to show you what the control panel looks like and the different features that this filament dryer has to offer. Now the cool thing about this filament dryer is you don't have to remember what are the appropriate temperatures and times depending on the type of filament that you have. So by default you see that it is on PLA at 50 degrees Celsius, that's where the temperature is gonna to try to climb up to and it's gonna dry it by default for four hours. Let's say I didn't have PLA in here, I had something else. So what I would do is I would hit this menu button here and then PLA will flash and then I would hit this down arrow and then that'll switch it to ABS. And then you see the temperature has now gone up to 60 degrees Celsius for two hours. You press it again, that gives me PA. There's even some filaments that I don't even know what they are. There's PC right there. There's PETG, we're not done yet. We got ASA, we've got PVA, we've got TPU, PP, then there's M1, M2, and M3. Another thing that you can change is the fan speed. Now, depending on the filament type that you're using, the fan speed is gonna adjust accordingly, but if you wanted to do it yourself, you can hit this settings icon here. And as you can see, this is flashing, so I can change the temperature if I want from there. If I press it again, the fan is now blinking, so I can press this arrow. That is going to be for the lowest fan speed. All of the fans like that is the fastest fan speed. And then when you see just two fan blades, that's going to be in the middle. And they do recommend if you're going to be drying filament at around 50 degrees Celsius or lower to just stick with the lower setting. And then if you're going to go above 60 to use the fastest speed setting. And there's also a rotation feature. So this right here has a 360 degree icon. So when you press it, see the filament is starting to turn and it'll stop and then it's going again. So I just turned it to the side a little bit so that you can see it in action. So it is rotating. And if you don't want to dry, you can press the power button one time and that's gonna take you to the humidity mode. So you're just gonna ask the machine to control the humidity and it's gonna do that by regulating the heat, turning it on and off to maintain a specific level of humidity. And you can change it. So if I hit the settings button here, you see that it's at 50. 
but I can go to 40, I can press this again, now it's at 30, 20, now it's at 10, and then I can take it all the way up to 70%. And of course you can use this while you're actively printing. You can bring the filament out through these three holes at the top. And then there's also some holes in the back that you can also run filament through. So it'll just help you get the perfect angle that you need for what you need it to do. All right, so I've been drying this filament for the past four hours at 50 degrees Celsius, 10% relative humidity inside of that box right now. So now I'm going to see if this white filament still has that lumpy consistency once I run it through the printer. Well, even though this filament is still coming out thicker than normal, must be something wrong with the entire roll, but at least it doesn't have all those lumps in it anymore. This is very smooth. I'm guessing that those lumps were caused by moisture and this filament dryer managed to take care of that. So, hey, that's what it's supposed to, taking out the moisture. So it's been over a week since I recorded that first portion of the video and I've been using this filament dryer exclusively since then. So I think I'm ready to tell you what my final thoughts are about this thing. Now, first of all, I don't want to pretend like this is some sort of revolutionary piece of technology because it's not. It is a dry box for your filament. I think the most important thing to know is how is the experience using it? Did they make it easy? What are the frustrating parts about it? Does it take any of the friction away from drying your filament? And that's what I'm going to get into. Now, first of all, you know what I like about this thing? First, it comes with a handle. You can lift it up really easily. It's the little things with this filament dryer that I really like about it. I reviewed previously a fixed dry filament dryer and it did not have a handle. And even though it had a pretty firm uh, fit on the base, it was a two-handed operation. If I wanted to get the lid off, I had to basically just grab it with one hand and kind of fuss with it until I was able to finally uh, take it off. And I tried to print a handle and affix it to the top with some double-sided tape, just like I did with my resin 3D printer and my wash and cure station. And that's made operating that a whole lot easier. But the box, the lid is so snug on the base when I would lift it up, the entire filament dryer will be lifted up with the handle. So even doing that still made it a two-handed operation, but not with this. I can just lift it up easily. And I love that about it. You know what else I love about this filament dryer is that I don't need to remember the different filament times and the different temperatures for a wide variety of filaments. It's something I had to do before. What do you dry PLA at? Is it 50 degrees Celsius or is it 60 degrees Celsius? Is it for three hours or is it for six hours or is it not either of those? It's all built in here. All I have to do is just turn it on, select the filament that I want, and it's like, hey, preset the time and it's preset the temperature. I don't have to worry about that. And that is awesome. Another thing that I like about it is it does not slide around. When it's on the table and I need to just push a button, when I push it, the box doesn't slide. It doesn't slide around. Even though it's light, it doesn't slide. And I don't have to put my arm on it to do anything. I can just push these buttons, push whatever I'm gonna use, and the, the filament dryer just stays put. And considering that I had this placed in between two 3D printers, and I have to have it in a very specific way so that it doesn't come in contact with the gantry on one printer and it doesn't come too close to the other one. So making sure that it doesn't slide around in my case is really important. And it doesn't do that. So that's another thing that I like about it. I like the fact that when I dry the filament, if I don't want to take it out immediately, I can just leave it in the humidity mode and it'll periodically heat up the chamber to keep it at a specific humidity level until I am ready to use the filament again. I think that's great. Instead of having to start the drying process all over again, I love the fact that you got these two, um, you have these two places in here where you can put desiccant if you want to further enhance the drying experience and being able to close this vent here to keep that heat in. It's just really convenient, you know? And even though I don't have any three kilogram spools, I'm glad that it does come with this expansion 
it would be great if it just came with this expansion for all of the units that sold and it wasn't uh, an additional purchase that you have to make. But if you find yourself needing a three kilogram spool, then you know I'm glad that the extension exists, although it doesn't come standard. But with all that being said, I really do like this filament dryer. I thought that I would be a little bit annoyed by the fact that you have to put it together, but it goes together really easily. It's not hard to put together and all the pieces just fit into place. And it was, you know, even somewhat of an uh, enjoyable experience when everything just gets put together so easily. So this thing is great. And I've used it with that white filament that was giving me trouble. You saw how it was able to get those knots out of the filament. I also had some old red filament that I've had for over a year that sometimes would smoke when it gets put into the extruder. So it was quite moist and running it through hit through this. It does not have that problem anymore. So I can finally go through that roll and be done with it. So it dries. It does its job and it's also helped me out with some other filaments that I'm going to show in the future so I can get the best possible experience drying those and uh, yeah it does its job and it does its job well. Most of the spools I've had in here are cardboard spools and I did have it on the rotating mode and there's just a little bit of the residue from the cardboard in here. Just tiny, tiny little bits of cardboard that have just flaked off. It's really no big deal. But since I see it, I decided to tell you about it. But all in all, I think that this is a great filament dryer. It does what it's supposed to do and it makes it easy and it takes the friction away from doing it, takes the guesswork out of doing it. You don't have to remember any any special temperatures or times. It just does it all for you. And for that, I think it's a winner. So remember the link to this is going to be down in the description so you can check it out for yourself and even purchase it if you like. And if you like videos like this 3D printed related, be sure to subscribe to this channel because I'll always have more videos coming. There's another one coming up pretty soon after this one. So that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves. I'll speak to you soon.